Hi everyone, so this video is how to have the best year of your life. It is sponsored by and a collaboration with Caltrade. For the next 365 days, we are going to live a life of authenticity, grounded reality and an incredible sense of purpose and direction. So grab a pen, a piece of paper, come and meet me on the sofa and I'm going to share with you what I'm personally doing, how this is going to help you and how we're all going to have the most amazing 365 days ahead of us starting today. So let's kickstart 2018. Okay, so now that you've got your pen and a piece of paper, I want you to write down all the things that you need to do, see, learn about, achieve over the next 365 days to make this year the best year of your life. I want you to write this vision in a positive way. So I'm banning you from using the word no, can't or don't. For example, if you want to give up sugar this year, I don't want you to write the goal as in no sugar or chocolate this year because your brain will just be constantly thinking about sugar and chocolate. I want you to write, this year I'm going to eat plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables. Replace the negative with a positive. I also want you to make sure that you know that these goals are achievable. Even if there's only 1% that exists within you that knows that you could possibly achieve this goal if you put your head, heart and mind to it, that 1% has got to exist within you. Now don't worry if it's only 1% because I promise you throughout the 365 days that 1% is going to grow to 100%. Also, I want you to make these goals holistic. Don't just look at one component of your life. I want you growing in all different directions for this year to be the best year of your life. So look at financial goals, look at relationship goals, look at intellectual goals, look at spiritual goals, and of course, look at physical goals. And finally, make sure these goals are detailed because you need to know whether you've actually achieved them or not. For example, say I have a goal of becoming fitter this year. Now that's a great goal to have, but how do I know what my definition of fitness is and how do I know if I've actually achieved that? So for me, one of my goals this year is to actually be able to run non-stop for 40 minutes by March 2018. See how I've actually given myself a time frame to achieve that goal by, and I will know if I've achieved that goal or not as to whether I can run non-stop for 40 minutes. Now, if you experience a bit of a writer's block in coming up with these goals, that's okay, and that's also perfectly natural. Maybe explore your fantasies, because when you do that, it's incredibly enlightening, because you can see what you're actually really yearning for. So get started right now, and start writing all the things that you would like to see happen over the next 365 days. Okay, step number two is actually the hardest and most confronting, but it actually is the most important, and this is what's going to make this time different. I want you to write down on your paper why this 365 days is going to be so much better and different from the previous life that you've been living. What is your shift? What is your breakthrough? What is your new awareness? Now you might sort of realize, okay, you know what, I've had enough of feeling overweight and lethargic, or I'm sick of being alone, or I'm sick of the anxiety of knowing I've got all these debts and the debts are getting bigger or not going away or I'm sick of seeing my friends achieve so much and feel like I'm not achieving enough. You need to understand what is the line in the sand for you to step up and raise your bar. Now take as much time as you like and as time goes by and you're working through this progress, you might actually discover new things about yourself about what your true why is. Now one of my goals this year is actually to get better control over my emotions. And my reason why is I'm realizing it's detrimental to my relationships around me and I'm not being a great example for Rocco in controlling his own emotions. So one of my goals this year is to actually spend time exploring my emotions and getting better control as to why I react in certain ways. You know, I'm sick of using the excuse of being hypersensitive. You know what, that's just simply not good enough and it's holding me back in life. So for me, that is my breakthrough. I've realized it's time to grow up and be more responsible and take better control over my emotions. So when you have worked out why this year is going to be different, I want you to go back and make peace with your past. I want you to look back at previous goals that weren't achieved, projects that just weren't finished, challenges that just weren't overcome, or even relationships which just ended. I want you to stop and actually look for the wisdom in the lessons. And remember, there's no such thing as failure. These are all building blocks to help you path a new, happier, healthier future. Now, step number three, I want you to stop and think about why are these goals and visions so important to you? What is driving you to want to achieve them? What internal feelings are you chasing inside to achieve this external goal? Now, I'm going to warn you, going through this step, you actually might discover that some of your visions or goals aren't really that important to you, and that is perfectly fine and actually a blessing in disguise because it's going to mean you're a lot more efficient in achieving the goals that do remain. 
So I want you to stop now and think about what is the feeling or emotion that you're going to experience once you've achieved that goal. Now, for some people, this might be a feeling of confidence. It might be a feeling of fame or recognition, or it might be a feeling of energy and excitement and passion, or maybe it's a feeling of faith within yourself. One of my financial goals is to pay off my mortgage as quickly as possible. And behind that external goal, internally, I'm actually chasing security and safety. And by understanding that, that is what's driving and fueling my motivation to pay my home off quickly and make it actually happen. Okay, so the hard work is now over. Step number five is to write a list of all the strategies and solutions that you can come up with to help you overcome challenges. Now, life happens. We are going to have things that come our way out of the blue, or we may even have a suspicion that they may happen. That is life. But our success is determined as to how we react to those situations, how we rise above certain situations, how we brush ourselves up and pull ourselves back on the path again, and also how quickly we get up and get back on that path again. So I want you to acknowledge that there will be challenges out there and they will definitely come across us over the next 365 days. There is no doubt about that. But I want you to write a list of what those challenges might be. Think about people, think about places, think about events that might rattle your cage or be a temptation or a danger zone. I then want you to write down solutions or ideas that are going to help you overcome each of those challenges and not just one or two, at least three ideas for each problem. Now, a classic example for me is when I'm feeling tired and run down, it is really dangerous. The wheels fall off. I become very, very emotional. I eat really bad sugary foods and I skip my workouts. And that is not good for me and my success for the next 365 days. I really want to avoid that from happening. So I've come up with some really proactive ideas and solutions. One being I get my exercise done as early as possible in the day. So I don't have the excuse of getting out of it because I've already done it when I have lots of energy. The second thing that I do is making sure that I eat a really good nutritious balanced meal. And then finally, making sure that I get the right balance of vitamins and minerals into my body every day. So my energy levels do not diminish towards the afternoon. Remember, this part is about coming up with as many ideas to safeguard your success. Now, on this note of coming up with ideas and solutions to overcoming challenges, I want to remind you this is actually it comes from a place of self-love. This isn't about being mean to yourself or depriving yourself or being ridiculously strict on yourself. I want you to have balance in your life. So say for example, one of your dangers is partying too much, partying through the weekend and not you know, addressing your financial or fitness goals. Well then you say to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna allow myself one social event per weekend and then I'm gonna spend the rest of my spare time dedicated towards working on my goal. See how we've added in a bit of balance. We've allowed you to have fun and do the things that help you know, fill your glass and make you feel happy and connected to the world. So it's not about going without things and being cool and mean to yourself. And another point I also like to raise is social media. We're always being told to limit our exposure to social media and it's not good for our mental health. Well, I don't entirely agree. I think it's important to have some social media exposure, but make sure it's social media that inspires you and directly reflects your goals. So go through your social media, look at the people who help you stay focused on achieving your goals. People that have maybe already achieved what you're working towards. For example, I love to follow people who post really healthy, nutritious meals and people who like to post work, um, their workouts on social media. That inspires me to work harder at the gym or to run faster or run further or pick a healthier um, meal off a menu in a restaurant. So look at your social media and see if they're having a positive influence in your life and they can then stay. Step number six. Now, this is where we make sure we achieve all those things that we put on our list. It is where we plan it, feed it, grow it. Now, I want you to form three new habits. From the moment you open your eyes, I want you to read your list of goals. I want you to read your list as to why this time is different. I want you to read the list of feelings that you're going to experience once you achieve your goals. And I want you to read through the list of strategies and solutions for overcoming challenges. Now by doing this, this means that when we open our eyes, we open them with motivation, dedication, determination, and focus. And this will massively reduce the risk of us losing our motivation or getting distracted. The second habit that I want you to form is to spend 10 minutes every day per goal. Now, I know you might say, well, I don't simply have enough time, but I promise you for this year to be the best year of your life, you need to find that time. It'll be well worth the investment when you do. And for the minimum of 10 minutes per goal, I want you to do something that will help it actually happen. So say, for example, one of your goals is to get fitter. I want you to spend a minimum of 10 minutes working on your fitness. 
If your goal is, say for example, to get better at golf, I want you to spend at least 10 minutes watching a YouTube video or practicing at the driving range your golf swing. If your goal is to learn a new language, I want you to spend at least 10 minutes practicing speaking that language. There are plenty of apps, there are plenty of books, there are plenty of YouTube videos just to help strengthen your language skills. If one of your goals is to improve your relationship, I want you to spend 10 minutes thinking up a really nice text message to send that person which will catch them by surprise and put a smile on their face. Remember, it's the little things that really do count and those little things really do add up over time. And remember, baby steps count, especially when they're heading in the right direction. And then the third habit that I want you to form can actually be done from the comfort and luxury of your own bed. I want you to go through your goals and assess how you are progressing. What are you achieving? What is working? What isn't working? What can you change to make it work better for you? What are you enjoying working on? What can be removed? What can be tweaked? I want you to get creative so that you can actually achieve these goals. But I, most importantly, I want you to actually stop and feel and see the progress. Even if it means you could only transfer $1 from your savings account towards your credit card debt. That's okay. That's all right. I want you to stop and feel good about it because you never know. Tomorrow, you might be able to transfer $1,000 towards your credit card debt. Success breeds success and we all know that we get more of what we stop and appreciate and send gratitude towards. So stop and take the time to see how you're progressing through your vision for the next 365 days. Now I am really excited about us all collectively raising our bar and really kickstarting 2018. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've got a lot of information, knowledge and inspiration from this. Now remember, YouTube is a sharing community. So I would absolutely love to hear from you as to what your visions and goals are for the next 365 days. In this video, I have shared with you what I'm working towards and throughout the year, I'm actually gonna be sharing with you how I'm progressing, what challenges I'm, I'm coming up to, what I'm trying to do to overcome those challenges and what any successes that I might have with you. So I would absolutely love it if you can share it with me by putting comments in the comments box below. I would also like to take this moment to say thank you so much to Caltrate for sponsoring and collaborating with me on this video. It actually inspired me to make this video in the first place for you. So thank you, Caltrate. And if you're interested in other sources of inspiration, make sure you like us on Facebook because I always share the motivational videos that I watch in the morning to help kickstart my own day. Have a great week, guys, and I will see you next week for Money Monday. Ciao for now.